Welcome to lesson eight. And in today's lesson eight, after lesson seven, we're going to be combining all the skills and doing what is called an abstract conceptual drawing. So first I'd like to begin with the definition of abstract. An abstract drawing is the opposite of a realistic drawing. So we're not going to be drawing something um, realistic, like a still life. Um, it, it, it aims to, basically an abstract drawing aims to veer away from the peer representational art and focuses more on expression and mood and mark making and using the elements of art. Now there is going to be a little bit of realism, I have to admit that, but we're going to be taking an object like this and we're going to be changing it a little bit. So in other words, conceptual abstraction is art for which the idea behind the work is more important than the finished product. So in this case, um, it's not really anything of both, but we're going to be doing a still life study also. So yes, let's get started. So in this exercise, I like to call it the bell pepper. Um, some countries call it a green pepper. Some places even call it a capsicum. You can look it up. Now, um, I'm using a real object here. So my suggestion is that when you do use something like this, please cook it immediately afterwards or use it for a salad or wash it. Please don't waste it. Now, the reason why I am using a real one, it's because with the fake object, you can't really dissect it. So, and we're going to be looking at the inside of this drawing. So I did a drawing like this much, much earlier in my lifetime. And this is a drawing that I would often do with my students as well, um, which is the final part of still life drawing. So I'm gonna suggest that you wash your bell paper. You can do this with other food, but it doesn't work so well with an apple. It does not work well with an orange. Do not try that. It's going to be a messy affair. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be cutting up this piece and you will be seeing different parts of it on the inside. So give it a minute. All right, so let's get started. So once you've cut up your, um, your bell pepper, your capsicum or your green pepper, depending on which country you come from, um, put it in a display like this. And you might want to also take a photograph of it. You're welcome to do that, take a photograph. So this lesson generally would take you up to three hours. So one hour maybe for setting up your composition, the second for getting the drawing correct, and the third maybe for getting the shading techniques correct. So for your setup, I would suggest you start with setting out your pencils, your F pencil, your B pencil, 2B, 3B, and 4B. These are my favorites that I like to use. And let's start. So I'm gonna be doing the first part of this. Let's see how fast I can go with this. So generally you want to kind of get your composition in a way. So you might wanna have a look at your materials. Um, why I chose this because it has interesting details that you can add to your drawing and make it look really interesting. So I'm going to put it in a composition that I want. So you have to decide which way it is going to work. So in this case, I'll be starting with a very small drawing and I'm going to be doing my basic outline here. You can, of course, reference, use references from a photo if you want to. Um, you can, of course, use magazine cutouts or, in this case, um, printouts from Pinterest or wherever you source your or stock photos. You can do that. You're welcome to do that. I just like to use real objects and yes at the end of this first session i will most likely take a photo of it if i'm not finished 
and be using this for a meal prep so it won't go wasted. Why I choose to use realistic objects because it teaches you how to focus. Um, you know, you could, of course, there's a debate where I've seen people actually um, recreate artworks from other art artists or still lives. And I often, I, I do see the value in that, but at the same time, it's also kind of like, yeah, but it's not really, you're basically in sometimes copying someone else's shading, which it doesn't really teach you to look at real objects where the light really might fall and where it might really go. So I'm looking at it from the overhead view here, totally different to you. So you might want to, your setup of course won't be the same as mine. Keep that in mind. So your drawing is definitely going to look very different to mine. So you decide on your composition, how you want it set up and how you want it done. So often what we do is, some people like to use grid lines. I do not use grid lines. I like to use just rough placements. This is not the final drawing, so I'm going very, very light in this case. And you may, of course, move your drawing to this side, depending on your layout. It doesn't have to be... Vertical. So these are very rough placements, and they're not accurate. This is just to kind of position where I want my basic shapes. Okay, so I realize this is kind of like not in a second. Okay. I'll kind of do this. Let's see. Oh, there you go. You can see my drawing much better. Okay. So the basic setup is this side. And I might change a few things every now and then. Don't be afraid to erase your mistake. Um, your, this mark that you're making now is not necessarily going to be your final mark. Often people think, oh, when they put paint down or when they put their pencil mark down, that it has to be the final mark and that's it. That's not how this works. So you might also want to go back to a few spaces and check your measurements, check your objects. And if the string is too small, you might also want to enlarge it. So I'm just going on the inside there. 
just roughly placing where everything is. And I might decide to change it later. I might decide to use my perspective completely with those skills. So this is taking an ordinary object and then just changing it. So I did a, some speed drawing a little bit. So keep going with this drawing. You're welcome to pause the video at any minute, any time to keep drawing on your own. I'm not going to be showing you all the steps because it's going to take up too much time. So just to show you, I did this. And I will be going over the details again and again and again and again. Um, always remember to look 90% at your object and only 10% at your on, on your paper. If you're left-handed, of course, your setup should be on this side, right-handed this side. So once you've done this one, you can see I've gone into more detail, uh, especially on the inside here, which is quite a challenge. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. So if you have a little bit of smudge, just erase and do it again. Practice, practice, practice. So this is how far I've gone. Um, the seeds are quite complicated. Now I'm looking at it from, oh, when you see it in the camera here, you'll see it's overview, but I'm looking at it from the side. So of course the way I'm drawing it would look very different. So what I've done here is I'm not going to do <coughs> all the seeds because that's going to take up some time. But just to show you here, I've gone back and gone into the detail. Still using my B pencil. Going back and forth. And so I will move on to this one. This is just positioning my drawing. And it's actually taken up almost an hour. So feel free to do this an hour at a time. You don't have to do it in one sitting. You can do it in separate sittings or whenever you have time. If you want to do it the whole day, great.
So once you're done with like all three, you can go back again and then just kind of fine tweak it. So again, I haven't started any shading whatsoever just yet. Going back to check each shape. Um, and the great thing about dissecting it or cutting it up is so you can check and look at it as an organic shape as opposed to a whole object and you can look at it in sections which might actually make it easier for you and more interesting and more fun and really force your eye to do the work and again drawing from an actual real life object is just very different to um, a photo. So once you've gotten your final drawing bits here, um, you can start to do the shading bits. So I actually took a snapshot of this earlier. So you'll notice on this side, it's the smooth and there's kind of the texture on the inside. If you were to look at your still life. So we're going to start with the basics of shading. And I'm gonna start off with a 3B and a 4B. And going through bits of my drawing again. So we're going to start up with this part here, uh, this part here being the smoothest. And if my light's coming from this way, looking to where the light's going to be falling.
So once I've moved on to this one, I will move on to this one. So there's a lot of sections that I'm missing because this is going to be a very long video, so I'm trying to make it as short as possible. So naturally, if you keep getting little smudges here, you can just kind of erase it. Um, again, with this particular project, you can spend way more time than I'm doing it. I'm just doing it very quickly and you can go into way more detail. Often when I do teach this in the studio, it's actually a lot more detail than it can take up three lessons, maybe four. It de really depends on the student. This is just one way to quickly show you what you can do. So I'm going to be moving on to this one. And I know for me, there's a lot more that I can do that I'm doing right now. And I'm still just only using my 3B. And again, one of the nice things about using actual objects in front of you, you can see the light, where the light falls with your own eyes. Um, you're not relying on a camera, the camera's light or photographic light, which is sometimes superficial. And it's a great way to kind of learn using real life objects instead of just using a photocopy. So now I kind of want to move on to this space here, there. Yeah, it's proving to be a bit of a challenge. So I'm, again, I'm working really, really, really fast. And you can really go into detail with this project and really slow it down and really take your time. And again, don't be afraid to make corrections again and again and again and again and again. I say that all the time. It's part of learning. So, okay, once I've done the outside, I'm going to go through the inside and I'm going to show you a technique, grab a scissors. If you need to make your eraser kind of sharp, 
if you want to make the point sharp again you just can do that use an empty cutter or box cutter as they call it I'm using this this is here so you want to make the square part quite sharp so that you can kind of clean or lift it now of course you can get a fancy eraser with like a little point or you can get a battery operated one or electric one whatever they call them now these days but if you don't and you want to save up on a budget this works it's equally as well um, don't cut it the way I did um, but again this gives you a nice sharp edge pointy edge in case your edges are too round so you can clean up certain areas okay so again this happens a lot with smudging so now I want to start working on the inside so maybe clean up a little bit outside I'm gonna get back to that this is going to be a very quick drawing again many times I've said this a thousand times you can spend multiple hours on this different days as I've mentioned before take a photo of your still life make sure that you have it on hand Alright, so now I want to work on the inside of each one as I'm going and I'm going to probably erase and redo again certain sections. And for this maybe I think Let's switch back to my B pencil. Even though I've got everything in place, I want to double check my drawing again. And if you want to clean your eraser, do it on the surface. There you go. Nice and clean. So I'll be working up here again and inside there, looking at the inside part here. So going from there to there. And yes, sometimes that means erasing and doing it again. So I'll be moving on to this one now. I've kind of done this one again. Um, then I'm going to move on to this one and then to this one I'm going to work on the inside again. More detail. This one looks fairly easier to do. 
And again, I'll be using my B pencil. Redrawing each and every part again. Okay, so now I want to move on to this one, the final bit here. Again, there's so much more you can do with this drawing and I'm not really going into a lot of detail when I could be. So 